And you're on a mission to to make sure that parishes are place, places where this intentionally happens. Yeah. Uh, that men's groups are, are places where guys are actually forming vulnerable, real fellowship in Christ. Yeah. What do I, what do, I do? Lead me, John. Yeah. Well, first of all, I mean, there's reasons that we don't have these in our parishes. Yeah. I mean, we've called around a lot of parishes in our ministry and found out, you know, there's there's some with five and 600 areas, uh, with five or 600 parishes, and there's less than 6% that have anything for men. Have anything you know? at all. Right. Well, they have and, Knights of Columbus, yeah. which has been always more service-oriented. Yeah. It is needed. It's a great thing. No, but even a lot of the Knights will tell you, we'd like to go deeper. How, right, how yeah. How do we do that? Yeah, and so, so there's this great need, and the reason it doesn't exist is usually three things. Like, Father wants one, but Father's trying to figure out how to pave the parking lot. Mm-hmm. Father's writing homilies. Father's probably understaffed and trying to run a yeah. parish without it falling apart. So he doesn't have the time. The second thing is, guys want it, but I'm convicted of my shame. I'm not the right guy. How am I going to go in there and talk about Jesus when I'm still struggling with Acts? Yeah. And then the last thing is, I want to lead, but I don't know how the heck to do it, right? What do I do? So what we try to go around and do is, first of all, you know, share with men the testimony, my testimony, and say, look, I know right now you don't think God can use you, but let me tell you how he can. Start with your testimony. All right. Yeah, start with my testimony. I'm like, because I know you think I'm just another guy that's blowing in here, and I probably came out of the womb with holy water and a Bible, and... Yeah, but that's not true. I've been in jail, all these things, whatever. But God did something with me that that I could not do for myself, and he will do the same with you if you just believe he can, Mm -hmm. right? So if you feel called to lead, don't let the reason you you don't lead be because you don't believe that you can. Because Mm -hmm. it's not about you. It's about what God can do through you Mm -hmm. and what you're going to allow him to do. So if you feel like he's calling you to start, be be part of the solution. Right. Don't look to Father. Stop being a clericalist. Right. Right? Our priests are not. We are. Yeah. Like, Father, you should do all this stuff. Sure. Dude, please help me. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Just do it. Yeah, just do it. I mean, that's that's what happened to me. I had a priest that said, I believe that you could do something with this group, and I give you freedom to do it. What's a healthy men's ministry look like? You're coaching them. They're like, yeah. And and by the way, do do you do intentional coaching for parish yeah, That's so yeah, so we where, where do people get in touch with you for that? We you go to just on our okay. events and book me page, there's pilgrimages and all that stuff, but like in the middle of it is the men's ministry piece. You go there, you sign mm-hmm. up, you schedule it'll schedule a calendly call with me. And I'll actually okay. get on the phone with them and sit down and say, What's your parish like? Do you have men that, that want this, first of all? Because there's a difference between a pastor saying, Hey, will y'all do this? and the guys will show up and sweep the floor because father asked them yeah. to. Versus guys who were actually looking for something. You're going to get a lot of calls life. after this show. Bro. Well, I, mean, I hope so. I mean, because I want to help people. I yeah, want people awesome. to find what I've found, right? Because yeah. the guys in my group, they come to me all the time. They go, John, thank you for what you've done in my life. And honestly, I'm like, thank you for what you've done in mine. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because it's not about what I'm doing. It's not John, the Catholic speaker, in there. It's John, another brother in the Lord, Amen. trying to walk with other brothers in the Lord, right? And and those guys have no idea. Like, I wouldn't be able to do that. I wouldn't be sitting here right now if it wasn't for them. Amen. Right? And so... Like, that's what I want other people to feel is like our spirituality and, and our men's groups don't have to be, and no offense to people who've had it this way forever, but boring things that are just like, I'm going to show up, I'm going to have a donut, I'm going to shake somebody's hand, I'm going to leave. These should be life-changing oh, yeah. experiences. Oh, yeah. Our parishes are supposed to be places for the broken to go in and to find our Lord and be yeah. fixed. Yeah. And so I work with them and I say, give me guys that have a heart for the Lord. I don't care if they're, the, they're an ex-convict that got out yesterday. Give me somebody that has a heart for the Lord. And then... Let's give them the freedom and the teaching they need. So we're changing our website around now where it's not John the Catholic podcaster and speaker. It's here's the issue with men, here's the need, and here's what we're doing to fix it. Awesome. And if you want our help, then then we'll we'll help you. So Thanks for doing that, man. Yeah. So we go do Pierce missions where I give three talks. One is on my story. Uh, one is on uh, identity, restoring your identity, yeah. who you are, who you are, and what you're here for. Because mm-hmm. people struggle with purpose in yep. the middle of their life usually. What am I here for? Yeah. And then the last one is the most important thing, a personal relationship with Jesus. And yes, it's Catholic. Praise God. So that that's what drives your passion. And then while we're there, after those talks, small groups. yeah, I sit down and I have an implementation guide. Here's why we have this group. Here's the lead, what the leadership structure looks like. Don't do it by yourself. after three or four other guys so you don't have to carry the load and burn out. Yeah. And then here's the structure, four pillars. What's, what's the four pillars? Give us your secret sauce right I will, now. Oh, man, this is it. So I sat down in adoration. After Take out your a pens. Year. This is the secret <laughs> sauce. Yes, yes. You're getting right. it for if, it free. Works, if it doesn't work, don't blame me. I'm just the messenger. <laughs> so, but anyway, we had been meeting in my group for a couple of years, and guys were showing up. We were being super vulnerable. But guys were calling me on like Monday, and they're going, Man, do you have a minute? My life stinks. My wife and I are fighting. My daughter and I are mad at each other. Yeah. What do I need to do? I was still working at the auto parts place at the time. I was supposed to be making sales calls. So one guy in particular would call every week, and I'd be on the phone an hour and a half. And eventually I was praying in adoration. I said, Lord, 
They're great on Wednesday nights for an hour and 15 minutes, but why, why is it not taken through the rest of the week? And he said, you're being a crutch for them, John. You're being a crutch. They have to do it. It can't be you doing it. So a week later, I, I went to adoration again. This guy calls. He says, John, let me, do you have a minute? I said, no, I don't. I said, I, I know you're going to go on a diatribe about how bad your life is. I just want to ask you a couple questions. Have you prayed? No. Have you been to Mass? No. Have you been to confession? No. Have you been to adoration? No. Have you done anything spiritual? No. Call me back when you've done one of those things. <laughs> well, weren't you supposed to be my friend? Yeah, I'm being your friend right now. I'm being your friend right now. He hung up the phone. Good calls you, me back man. the next day. That's hard to do. It is. He wasn't happy about it. He called back the next day and he goes, you were right. I went in front of the tabernacle and I got clarity. Wow. So I started going, okay, this is about discipleship. We can't just show up to a men's group and use it as a, as a city dump either, right? Yeah, we, yeah. This is how I suck this week, Chris. You know, yeah, We can't yeah. just do that. So what, uh, what we started to do is I went to adoration again. I said, Lord, you were the best evangelist ever, right? The greatest evangelist ever. I'm not going to make the new, new, new evangelization. So what did you do, right? So we, we had four times we met during the month, and I left with a journal that said, I mm. formed my disciples, I worshiped with my disciples, I served with them, and I fellowship. I looked at that, and I go, formed, man, worship, formed serve, worship, service, and fellowship. fellowship. That's beautiful. So instead of like, the, part of the reason most people, men and women both, get sick of Bible studies is because it can be very boring after a while. To sit in a room for an hour every week and go, all right, turn the page, whatever, yeah. read, and then people... Well, there's, a, there's needs in the soul that aren't met by doing one thing right. all the time. There's a wholeness to a person. Yeah. And so this four-pillar approach reaches that wholeness. People want to know our Lord, and we need to know our faith. Formation night. So that's where you're studying your stuff. Yeah, that's where you're studying. That's cool. And it, sometimes it's not even watching a video. Sometimes they'll go, are we, are we watching a video? I go, no, we're going to talk about what's going on with you. Yeah. Who wants to start? Okay. And then we open it up, and whatever happens, if it's pride or anger, we get in the Word, and this is what the Lord says about it. People share their experiences. You have Paul awesome. and Timothy relationships develop. Awesome. But the other piece is, is worship. Um, we have a night where men stand, stand, stand shoulder to shoulder together, and we have a daily Mass. We have adoration. We have confession. So we're offering men an Beautiful. opportunity for two sacraments and, and then adoration with the Lord, which most men don't have, spend a lot of time doing. Yeah. Or we have another priest that does a healing holy hour where he chants and there's candles lit everywhere and it's amazing. And it's awesome. Guys are crying and it's, it's awesome. And then the next night is service. And it's like, we, I want to go serve the Lord, but I don't want to walk into the soup kitchen by myself. Or I don't know how to or where to. Yeah. So we invite those men to oh, go do it together. And you see each other's vulnerability and humanness in yeah. that kind of setting. You do, because you're sitting, it's a different type relationship at that point. When you're on formation and all those things and at worship, you're focused on that. But when you're sitting there boxing up food at Catholic Charities next to a guy, you can talk about life. You can talk about just, you know, what he likes, all that. So you grow in your relationships. Then the last night's fellowship. Dude, we go throw axes. We go bowling. We go to Grizzlies basketball games. We've done all kind of stuff. That's awesome. Bourbon and cigars in somebody's backyard. Yeah. Just doing life together. And that's what we're trying to go out is, I, I don't have all the answers, but what I know is our Lord did this. And you and I wouldn't be sitting here today he if he axes. didn't. Right. I know he well, did. Well, he probably did. <laughs> well, <laughs> if he, he could have. If not, he created it for other people to do it, so he must be a fan. <laughs> right? So, but, but yeah, like, it's literally just, this doesn't have to be complicated. The reason we don't have this is because I'm afraid that I'm not a good leader. I don't know how. We can help with that. Right? Yeah. I didn't know how to do it either. But God showed me and other people.